help the boat get onto plane, you want to trim the engines in all the way so they're pushing up at about five degrees. That helps get the stern up on plane. And then as you start to gain speed, you want to trim the engines out so they go from thrusting up to thrusting horizontal to then thrusting down. And not, not so much to get the, the stern down, that's not what you're looking for, but it's to get the bow up because the boat's just a big, it's a big seesaw. But what I usually do is I'll trim them up until they just start to ventilate you. And you can hear that. You can hear the engine start to accelerate and then it can get louder. And then you can just trim them back into that sound goes away. And that's your sweet spot for efficiency. A well-designed boat, say a, a Grady White, any kind of, any of the Hunt Hall's well-designed boats with the right amount of, of dead rise at the transom can easily get on a plane at 11 or 12 knots. If you're going to put the boat in a prolonged hard turn, you'll want to trim the engines back down a little bit before you do that. You want to bring them an inch or two further away from that sheet of water from atmosphere so that when you do put the boat in a turn, they don't ventilate and draw air in and stall. If they draw air in and there's air now surrounding the propeller, you lose thrust. One thing I love about the, the Grady White, the Hunt designs, I can run along at 4,500 to 35 knots, maybe trim the engines in just a little bit so the props don't ventilate. And I can put the rudder hard over it quickly, and all the boat does, it turns harder and it slows down. When you are going into the waves, unlike going down sea where you want to get the bow up, sometimes going into a very short, steep chop, you want to get the hull down into the water a little bit more, because then the waves are, are impacting the hull a little bit further forward where there's more dead rise. So two things happen, there's more dead rise as you go forward, and also the angle of incidence, if you will, between the hull and the wave is reduced. Now I've lowered my bow so that the, the angle that the wave sees as it impacts the hull is less, and it's hitting in an area where there's more dead rise, and those two elements combine to make it a smoother ride. Now, as you put the bow, as you do that and you put the bow down, you may be giving up. In fact, you often are giving up um, are two things. One is you're putting more hull in the water so you're slowing the boat down. You may be increasing the tendency to bow steer just a little bit because you have more hull in the water. And the other thing is since the spray route or the, the impact zone of the hull is further forward, it tends to make the boat wetter. But if all those things are, are, are not as important to you as a smoother ride, then put the bow down. And you can do that with an outboard powered boat either by trimming the engines back in a little bit or by dropping the trim tabs. Okay, speaking of trim tabs, it's, you have to use them judiciously. The trim tabs create lift, but they also create drag. So when you drop your trim tabs down, you're putting on the brakes and you're burning more fuel. So if, you're, if you have to adjust the trim of the boat, in other, in other words, to, if you want to lift the stern to put the bow down in a head sea, with outboards and, and inboard outboard stern drives, you're much better off uh, tucking the engines in a little bit because you're not really adding drag all you're doing is redirecting the thrust, which puts the bow down a little. If I use trim tabs, it's to correct for either heel, which is uh, a dynamic effect to make the boat tip to one side. Say you're in a turn or, or, you're, or you're steering into the wind, which makes the boat heel into the wind. Um, or it's list because you've got a lot of people on one side of the boat. That's when I tend to use the trim tabs, to drop one tab to lift the side back up. running with the waves, you want to have the bow up especially so that you can control the bow. We talked earlier about the profile of the keel underwater and that making the boat tend to bow steer. So you're reducing that profile not only by a well-designed boat that has a rounded off keel, but also by using the engines, the outboard, to trim the hull out of the water forward. It's very easy for the boat to roll and then yaw. So roll is, is heeling over to the side and then yaw is changing course. And if you do that enough, if you roll enough and you yaw enough, you can turn into a brooch the boat can capsize. That's in a very extreme uh, condition. So you want the boat to have this natural tendency to go straight. One of the things that really helps you is when you do turn the boat, you want it to heel in, into the turn, like a bicycle. And if it does this precisely correctly, when you're going down sea, it adds tremendously to the stability of the boat. If it didn't, if you're in a boat with a full keel and you put the rudder over to the right, the boat will heel outboard and that'll accelerate that process of rolling, yawing, and broaching. So that's an important uh, element of down-sea course keeping.